revelation of the risen one. Shout glory! Say to me, say, I'm born of God. Say, I am the righteousness of God. Say, the greater one lives in me. Say, I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. I can hear you say, I'm anointed. Glory! Let's have a seat. We are still going to sing the song again. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the greatest revelation ever. The revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God. You are anointed of God. We cannot overemphasize this. That the believing one is anointed. Amen. The believing one is anointed. You are anointed of God. Glory to God. We looked at that last week. We started last week. We're looking on the anointing of the spirit. That the believer is anointed. You are anointed. When you believed Jesus, the day you believed Jesus, the day you received, you received Jesus, you received the anointed one. The Bible said Christ in me. The hope of glory. I, I say it like this. I say Christ in me is glorious. Hallelujah. Christ in me is glorious. And Christ in me is a hope of greater glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, is a new creation. If any man is in Christ, is a new creation. And that is what we are. That is our situation. That is our report. We are now in Christ. We are engrafted in Christ. We are created in Christ. Hallelujah. We are created in Christ unto good works. The anointing of the Spirit itself is in us. Every believer is anointed. There is no believer that is more anointed than, the anoint than another. Every believer is anointed the same way. Hallelujah. You know, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Look at 2 Corinthians. We looked at that again last week. But look at that again. 2 Corinthians 1. You know, we just stretch that a little further. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians and chapter 1, reading verse, read verse 21. Now, Second Corinthians, now, say this to me, say the Bible is our evidence. I can't hear you, say the scriptures is our proof. I have told you several times. Uh, you know, for example, if anyone asks you, how do you know you're born again? How do you know that you're saved? The scripture says, amen. The scripture says that if anyone will confess the lordship of Jesus, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, he says you are saved. It's as simple as that. So, the scripture is our proof. So, I believe I'm saved because the Bible says, if I believe that Jesus died and God rose him up, then I'm saved. It's as simple as that. Don't add your own to it. Don't add extra. Hallelujah. What the scripture says, stay with that. You major on where the scripture major and you minor on where the scripture minor. And that is, that's one of the best ways to keep yourself sane. Especially within this entire corridor of faith. Hallelujah. I, so, we look at the scripture. The Bible says the scripture is profitable for doctrine. Okay, that's not what we're teaching today, but just want to stretch it out. Because when you, when you take authority from the scripture, you are, you are emboldened. You are emboldened because you know that this is what the word of God says. The word of God said this. So, for example, that's why, you know, why I'm, straight, why I'm stretching this is because, like, look at that. First, Second Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.21. He says, now, to, now he which establishes us, with you in Christ and has anointed us. He has anointed us. Hallelujah. He said, God established us. He, he said, Paul was talking. He said, he said, He has established us, speaking of them, you know, as apostles and everything. And to them in Corinthians, He said, And has anointed us. He has anointed us. The believing one is anointed. And we said it's very important. Last week, 
we said the oil that you see people make physical is a physical demonstration of what has happened in the spirit. How you can, you, if, if you physically anoint somebody by putting oil on the person and the person is not anointed in the spirit, it makes no sense. It's useless. So the reason why even whatever you put on the person's head physically, okay, why it's significant is because of what has happened in the spirit. God has anointed us. Hallelujah. Every believer is anointed. You are anointed. You know, I, you know, I told us this and tried to, you know, make a little joke out of it so that we can understand it. You know, the anointed man of God is in town. That is true. There's an anointed man of God is in town. Yes, the anointed children of God are also in town. All of us are anointed. Amen. If you are not anointed, you will not understand what I'm, trying, what I'm saying. You will not understand the communication. You will not understand it. Hallelujah. Everyone will believe the gospel. Everyone who believes the gospel. Look at what he says again. He says that now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. He has anointed us. Every believer is anointed. There is, like I said, there's no one anointing. You know, small, you know there's a scripture in the Bible, you know, um, in Second, Second Kings uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Maybe let's go there. You know, it was talking about the double portion that when Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah Elisha, Asked Elijah, and he says, I want the double portion of your spirit. And it came to pass, okay, he said, so he asked him, what do you want? So Elijah asked him, so what exactly do you want? He says, and it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I, shall, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So what Elijah prayed for was, he prayed that he would receive a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And the next verse, look at what he says in the next verse. Help me out. He says, he says, and he said, you have asked a hard thing. You know why it's hard? It is hard because, for example, if I have $100, amen, I have $100, and you are asking me, for the double portion of $100. It's $100 I have. I cannot give what I don't have. I, that is part of why it is hard in the first place. See, you, if, if you are asking double portion of what, I'm not the one who is going to give. I can't give you twice of what I don't have. I can only give you exactly what I have. How are you going to try to say here? So it's, it's actually very hard. And, and Elijah knew, Elijah knew what he was asking for. And that's why I'm trying to, I want to try and explain that a little before we proceed further to today's teaching. He knew exactly what he was asking because he was an Israelite, you know, he's an Israelite. So he understood from, he understood the principle of double portion. So he was not just saying things because he feels, he feels like, you know, he felt like saying it. So he said those things that he said because there's a principle that guides double portion. And, and we see that in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 21. Yeah, let's go there briefly. Deuteronomy 21, the book of what is due to me. Amen. That's not true. That's not revelation. Hallelujah. But you know what I'm saying. Deuteronomy 21. Just trying to stay there first. Deuteronomy um. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deuteronomy 21. Let's start from verse 15. If you're there, say Jesus is Lord. If you're not there, say I'm blessed. Okay. So we just wait for five seconds. One, two. Uh, let's just do Jesus is Lord together. Deuteronomy 21, 15. If a man has... If a, man, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the first son be the, be, if the, if the first born son be as that was, okay, be as that was hated, then it shall be when he makes his sons to inherit what uh, that which he has, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn. 
before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. So you, you so look at that. So uh, uh, so when he so what he's trying to say is this. So if a man has two wives and that he loves one and he hated he hates the other. Now he says that. Now he's talking from the law, from the standpoint of the law. Then, okay, are you following everybody? So he has two wives. He hates one. He, you know, he loves another. And both of them have, you know, they gave birth to children, son. Okay, he's saying this that he will not make the son of the if the son of the hated one is the first, that first son will inherit. Okay, let's keep reading so that you get the point. Where did I stop? Okay, now. Verse, um, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him what? A double portion of all that he has. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Now, the right of the firstborn. Somebody say the right of the firstborn. Now, the right of the firstborn is his. So that is the law of double portion. The law of double portion says, so this is this like saying, for example, I have Let's say I have one million dollars as all the money I have, you know, all my total assets, and now I have two sons. Okay, now, now I need to divide them accordingly. So I'm going to divide them five hundred thousand dollars. Another, another is going to take five hundred thousand dollars. That is, I have divided my inheritance accordingly. So I gave one five hundred thousand dollars, and I gave the other five hundred thousand dollars. Now, but. If I am a king, okay, if I am a king and I have $500,000, so I give, the, I have $1, one million, so I give one $500,000, I give the another $500,000. Now, both of them take 500, 500, isn't it? Good. Now, but when I'm gone, the first bond, we take 500, as taking the $500,000 and we also take my position. As a king. So he takes my inheritance. So he takes the right of the of the of the firstborn. So that is what is called double portion. So double portion is both the inheritance and also takes their position. Are you, are you following me here? So for example, that's why the Bible says in James 1:18, the Bible says he has begotten us. Okay. The Bible says, you know, we, he has begotten us and we are we are a kind of first fruit of his creature. The Bible says you are the Bible says that you have come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living uh, uh, of the living God. He said you have come to the church of the firstborn. So it, it's it's not just you know just not like okay the Bible just feel like they just feel like saying first first first. It's a lot. In other words, even in the New Testament, not only that you are joint, I mean you have received the anointing of the spirit, you are also Joint heir together with Christ. So you both have, you also, we also have double portion. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? You have the double portion. I'm explaining it by virtue of the concept of double portion. So the believing one also has that double portion. So are you getting what I'm trying to say here? So it's not the double portion concept. Is not, I, I remember when I was growing up, you know, we would say, oh, Father, you know, because I pray that you multiply the anointing of Pastor Ideboye plus the anointing of Pastor Chris plus the anointing of Oerepo plus the anointing of E.W. Kenya plus and raise power two, you know, times 100. Lord, I receive it. I know it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know, I don't know if any of us have prayed that kind of prayer before. Amen. I, I prayed that prayer. Amen. I prayed the prayer. I said, Lord, I receive anointing. Anointing of Oh, yeah, Deku. Pastor uh, yeah, yeah, Pastor Deboye. Times. I was not even doing plus. Times. The total. Race power two. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but you see, this is it. There, there, there's no more anointing. Anointing does not increase. See, you don't have more anointing than another person's anointing. Anointing is the same. So the concept of double portion of anointing is simply we are going to divide the inheritance. And after division of the inheritance, the firstborn son, we have double portion. So in other words, they are not going to divide the throne. The throne is, is his throne. So he's going to receive double portion of whatever is going to be divided. He's going to receive the inheritance divided and also take the position of the father. 
And that was what this guy was asking. He said, see, he said, Elijah, Elisha told him, he said, this is what I want. That when you are, because he, he, was, he was in the school of the prophet. In the school of the prophet, they had so many of the prophets there. And he said, okay, what do you want? He said, see, I want to have double portion of your spirit. So in other words, what I want is that whatever is going to be distributed to the whole entire son of prophets, who ought, I will share it. We will share it. But more than that, your place, your place, go, 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 go. So that one, go, go, I want it together with it. I, because this is it. You cannot, anoint it does not bring, that what increases, and we said that last week, what increases is power. Is power. Now this is a listen up. The reason why, okay, that's why we talk about the flow of the spirit. The flow of the spirit. So the degree to which, to which, uh, the flow of the spirit or the anointing, you are you flow in the anointing, is a degree is the degree to which you are consecrated. For example, either in fasting, in praying, you cannot pray in tongues for long, and you won't release power. It's not possible. Are you following everybody here? But you are anointed. It's there in your spirit. But the more you pray, the more you study, the more you consecrate yourself. That degree is to which you release the power. As a music minister, like we said last week, as a preacher, as a believer too as well. You don't have to have a collar or you have a title before you move power of God. No, no, no. no. You don't have to. So it is, so for example, remember in Mark, in Luke, Luke 5, 17, there about. The Bible says they gathered, Jesus was gathered, they gathered with Jesus, you know, in a teaching meeting and the Bible said the power of God was available to heal. Is the power that is available. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. It makes tremendous power, power to be available. Jesus would say in Luke 8, the Bible, Jesus said when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, Jesus said, virtue left me. The word virtue there is the same Greek word as power. Power. Dunamis. Power left me. Hallelujah. So what, 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 where we differ is release of power, actually. Where we differ is release of power. And the way you release power is in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Is in the place of prayer. Or for example, you know, as I'm teaching, as I'm teaching and everybody's understanding, you are listening, you know, you, are, you know, there's, there's an influence of the spirit. That's what I'm talking about earlier. You know, I, I think I said it a while ago. The power of God, you know, people already limited the power of God only to, you know, people falling down or blind eye seeing. That is also good. That is spot on, okay? Blind eye seeing, lame walking. But there is, there is the power of God that changes the character of a man. It changes, see, that's why you see somebody who, who is a sinner, a chronic sinner, would come to Jesus and such a person will start living the love life, who start walking in love. Why? It is power. Are we together, everybody? Am I communicating to you? I've not even entered where we start, but we just, I just want to set, just to lay the foundation. That is power. So what, what makes the difference? What makes the difference is the power of the Holy Ghost. Even if you're a music minister, if people come to our meetings and people are listening and getting blessed and their life are changed, are transformed, it is the power of the Holy Ghost. That is changing such. Some persons, sometimes you would say things and your vocabularies are not even correct. Sometimes you carry, you know, past tense to middle tense. And everything, you just jump, jump, put everything together. And still, you see people changed. And lives are changed and transformed. It is the power of God. And every one of us, every one of us has that. There is, there is, of course, there is, a, you know, just trying to establish something. There is, there is a, there's a chain of reaction. For example, the human will, are you together, everybody? The human will, the anointing of the spirit, and also the recipient, the recipient will. So, for example, like we said earlier, every believer is anointed, isn't he? Every believer is anointed. You are anointed. But now, your will to pray, to consecrate yourself. By consecration, I'm saying you dedicate yourself to doing spiritual exercises. That's what I mean by the consecration. Like studying the scripture, praying. Singing in the spirit. Now, your will to do that is you yielding yourself to the flow of the spirit or the flow of the anointing. Now, even when you yield yourself to the flow of the anointing, 
when you minister the anointing, the recipient will. Also, it's also important. Because sometimes, Jesus was in, was in his hometown. The Bible says he could there do no mighty works. Why? Because their will, the recipient's will. So this is you know, why, I'm, why I'm explaining these things. So that you don't, you don't go too, um, you know, you don't go too, you don't begin to think that this anointing thing is, is specifically for some set of people. No, because you have believed Jesus, you have the anointing. You have the anointing of the spirit. When the Bible says, touch not my anointed, he's talking about you too as well. You are the one he's talking about. He's not, he's not me. He's not some pastors. He's not some persons. No, no, he's talking about you as a person. I'm not saying that you begin to talk any out of me. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying that you as an anointed person, you are also the one the Bible the scripture is talking about. Hallelujah. Say, I've got the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Look at it, 1st John, 1st John, 1st John. We have the anointing of the Spirit. And it is the same anointing that you have that breaks demonic oppression. That same anointing of the Spirit. You have it. And that's why we say this very important. You wonder, some people used to ask me, oh, pastor, why would some folks, for example, you would see some folks demonstrate the Spirit minister the anointing, and yet they are teaching junks. Yet they would. They would say all kinds of things. You know, you see some people say, you know, well, if you, if you are this, you make hell. If you are this. And they say all kinds of things. Now, the reason is simple. Because if you have believed Jesus died for your sins, and that he rose again on the third day, you are what? Anointed. Now, the difference is that such persons, they are devoted to praying. And they also use the name of Jesus. So whoever uses the name of Jesus, it will work. And they are devoted to praying. Am I communicating to you here? Okay, first John. First John. Hallelujah. First John 2. First John and chapter 2. First John and chapter 2. Let's start reading from verse... Um, First John and two. Let's read from verse twenty. But look at what he says. He says, "But you have, so you have." First John two. Let's start reading from. Okay, let, let me start reading from. Uh, so to to help us a little bit better from eighteen. He said, "Little children, little children, it is the last time, as you have heard that Antichrist shall come." Even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. He said, they went out from us, that they were, but they were not of us. But if, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they, went, that they were not all of us. Verse 20, are you there, everybody? Verse 20 said, but you... Now, who are the you here? The you here are the believing ones. The one who believes. You see, he started by saying little children. And he was talking to the, the, to, to the people he was writing to. He was talking to his children in the Lord. So he's talking to believers. Say, I'm a believer. Now, because you are a believer, so that means he's writing to you as well. So he said, but you, you have an auction. You have an auction from the Holy One and you know all things. So now look at everybody. Now, he started by saying that there are many antichrists in the world. Even this was around almost 1900 years ago. But he was saying as at that time that there were many antichrists. He now said, but you have an auction. You, the believing one. You, the children that he said earlier. He said little children. By little children, not necessarily talking about age. But he's talking generally to believers. He said, you have an auction. You have an auction of the Holy One. So who gives the auction? The Holy One, God. Hallelujah. He said, look at it. Look at it. He did not say you will have. Did he say you will have? No. He said you have. Say I have. So you said you, you have an auction from the Holy One. And what happens to the auction? He says you know all things. Okay. Okay. You know. Okay. Let's, let's jump to 27. Amen. Let's jump to 27. 
Verse 26. He said, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Verse 27. But the anointing, are you following, are you following everybody? But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. This is not talking to pastors. He's not talking to evangelists or bishops or some person. He's talking to believers. He said, but the anointing which you have received of him. So you received the anointing from the Holy One, the unction from the Holy One. He said, abides in you. See, let me say, see, listen, listen. The anointing that we have received. Look, what we read earlier, he says, you have an unction from the Holy One. And you what? And you know what? All things. Even as I'm talking, some persons still don't recognize that they're anointed. I'm serious. I know in my spirit. They still don't know that they're anointed. You're anointed. And we said it's the reason why you are. That's it. For example, we said it last week. Jesus said in Luke 4, 18. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because I am anointed. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because I am anointed. The reason why the spirit of God would flow through him is because he's anointed. Hallelujah. Okay, look at him. He said, go back again. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and it's true, and it's no lie, and even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Now, this is very important, we should know this. You know, when people talk about the Antichrist, you know, I, I think a lot of people have all those kind of, you know, especially within the Christian, oh, Lord have mercy. There are so many things I'm thinking about here. Okay, listen, everybody. You are anointed. If you know what that means, it is good to recognize it. It is good to be conscious of that. Because the, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And there is something about the devil. The devil will take chances. He take chances. Now, listen up, everybody. Now, he said something, sometimes when they talk about Antichrist, oh, this, I remember when we were growing up, we used to see movies, you know, end time movies, and all those things, and you know, your heart is going to be kiki, kiki, kiki. And, and, and I told you this, everybody listen. Christians have made the best horror movies from this Antichrist series. We made the best of it. See, there, see if you, even till now, for many of us, when you hear Antichrist, or for many of us, when you hear the coming of Jesus, what comes to your mind, your reaction is always fear. If your reaction is fear, then you have been taught wrong. Or you have been wrongly taught. Why? Because the anointed one can't, the Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. Okay, let me say this, everybody. Now, go to 1 John. 1 John. 1 John 4. Go to 4. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Let's start. Now, look here, everybody. Look here. Are you following everybody? Don't forget this, that you are anointed. Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Okay. And you're, you're anointed because you believe the gospel. Because you believe Jesus. So the anointing of the spirit, the spirit of God has come to dwell in you. Because the anointing is the spirit. And Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. And he will abide with you forever. He said, it shall be in you. And that is the anointing. The Holy Ghost is the anointing. Okay, look at this. Go back again. First John 4. Let's start from verse 1. First John 4, verse 1. Okay, he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Next verse. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. So he's saying that every spirit who believes, who says, who acknowledges the fact that God came in the flesh, is that that spirit is of God. Next verse. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So what he's teaching us here now is teaching us how to filter, how to discern. 
Okay, there is of any spirit that does not believe, that, that is the spirit of what? Antichrist. Wherefore you have heard that it should come, and even now, already, now, even what? Even when? Now. now. Now, this is First John. It was not written yesterday. It was not written last year. It was not written to you. It was written about 19, over 1900 years ago. And as at that time, when he was writing it, you just do little time travel in your mind. Just go. 19, he was writing around 50, you know, 50 AD, all those things. As he was writing it, he was saying it then. John was telling the church that even now, they are what? They are now already in the world. He's telling them. So in other words, those who received the first letter knew that, hey, there are many of them. So uh, who, who is the spirit? What is the spirit of the Antichrist? He said this. He said, whoever does not confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, yet that is the spirit of the Antichrist. And he said then that they were already in the world and they are still in the world. It's a, it's a concept. It's a belief system. Are you following me, everybody? But look here, everybody, look here. Next verse. Next verse. What did he say? Look at next verse. I want us to read it together. I want to go. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Overcome who? Are you going to try and say, you have overcome the Antichrist? Because see, you cannot isolate verse 4 and begin to say, you know, because there's a progression. It started from verse 1. He's talking in verse 1. Down, verse 2, verse 3, he's talking about the Antichrist. He says, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. In other words, any antics or tactics of the Antichrist, he says, you have overcome. He didn't say, you will overcome. No, no, just, maybe you didn't understand. He did not say, hey, little children, you are of God, and you will overcome them. No, I will not overcome the Antichrist. I will not. I repeat, I will not overcome the, I have overcome the Antichrist. That is the language of, that's the language you spoke there. It's the language of faith. Look at you. Why? Why is this saying that you have overcome the Antichrist? Because what? Greater is he that is in you. What is he or who is he that is in you? The anointing. So in other words, if you don't come, because we read earlier. In, fact, in, verse, in chapter 2, he said, you have an unction of the Holy One. He said, the anointing that you have received of him abides in you. Because in that first John 2, he was also talking about the Antichrist. He said, they were from us. They went out of us. So that they will be manifested. See, listen up, everybody. Brothers and sisters. You are anointed of God. To be anointed means... You are an overcomer. You started your life as a new creation, as an overcomer. Coupled with the double portion that you have. The double portion of the fact that you have the inheritance and also the position. Am I communicating to you here? You are anointed of God. It's, see, when you say someone is anointed, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. It means you are the one to dispense. The presence of God. You are, a, you, are, you are a carrier of God's presence. That's what it means. You are the one who dispenses the presence of God. You are the one that is qualified to dispense power. Hallelujah. You are the one. You know, just imagine somebody who is anointed. He said they are pressing him in his dream. He said he's sleeping. And they are pressing you. And you are anointed. Hallelujah. You don't know what they are trying to say here. Anointed child of God is being demonically oppressed. And no, is that is that is a that is disrespectful. Are you gonna, it is disrespectful? I'm not saying people are not experiencing that. People that are believers are even experiencing that. But it's disrespectful. But you come to the realization of who you are in Christ Jesus, of what is at work in you, and let it roar out. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, create power. You can be pressed. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? You cannot be pressed. You, you have a dream. In the dream, they are chasing you. And you wake up, a believer, anointed child of God, anointed. You had a dream, and in the dream, they are chasing you, and you woke up, and you are crying. You are crying. It's disrespectful. 
Let me tell you something. I understand that, you know. But in fact, you should not want to even say it. That, ha, that they are chasing me in my dream. You are anointed. See, think about it. Meditate on this thing. Know what it means to be anointed. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, he suffer no king to do them harm. Saying, the Bible said, the start of it, it said, they went from nations to nations. And he suffered no kings to do them harm. Saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You don't know what that means? You're anointed of God. You are anointed. Jesus said it. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because I am anointed. I am anointed. Why would Jesus die and God raise him up? It's simple. He's the anointed one. Are you getting, okay. See, whether you like it or not, whether they hate the mother, whether they hate the mother, whether the, the husband hates the mother, as long as he's the firstborn, the law of double portion has said it is his own. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Forget about his history. Whether there's any, there's no bias to it. This is, is a divine rule. I am trying to say this. It, by default, the, there's an oppression that is at work. You, just you being called the anointed. But you come to that consciousness. Are you going to try to say here? Yeah, your business, your marriage. You are not just married. See, you're not just doing husband and wife as, as a, as, you know, Homo sapiens. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, that's, what many, that's the way many people see it. Like, oh, we, you know, we are homo sapiens, you know, he's doing me, he's doing you, so, you know, both of us, you know, let's marry. <laughs> no, that's not the way it is. We are not marrying, you're not, mar you're not doing relationship with all those things because he's doing you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I understand that they're doing, doing part of it, but I'm trying to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that, you are anointed. Praise God. But look at what he says there. He says, the same anointing will teach you. Did you see that? He said, the same anointing will do what? Will teach you. That one we read in 1 John 2, 27. He said, the anointing will teach you. It will teach you how to love. It will teach you how to move the power of God. It will, the same anointing will teach you how to serve. Hallelujah. Say, I'm anointed of God. Say, I've got the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The greater one lives in me. I am more than a conqueror. Say, I have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have an auction from the Holy One. And I know all things. I know all things. Say, the love of God is shed abroad in my heart. By the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. We, we are going to do something now. Amen. For those who can pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You are going to pray. See, let me say this to you just before we pray in the Holy Ghost. Just to give you a tip to this, the way this operation thing works. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, I remember, okay, as a believer, hmm, if you fast, if you fast and pray, power will be available. It is a principle that always works. The power is available because you are anointed. Chong Bami, are you listening to me here? So it is not. So that might, that's why even as a believer, you should, as a person, you should dedicate times, even during the week, weekly, that you decide to fast and pray. You don't need you don't need a, you don't need stage. You don't need oh, let's see all this thing. The most of it, I'm probably going to be on stage for. I mean, talking to you in a week on Sunday for just two hours. But that's not. This is practically not the Christian living. The Christian living is not the one I talk for two hours, three hours, whatever. I'm going to end in the next few minutes. So, if that is all there is about Christian living, or there is about the anointing, then it's a joke. The anointing is, I'm talking about 247. You are carrying the power of God. You are carrying the anointing of God. 247 in your life. You are going now, you are coming in. Anything, everywhere you are going, you are, you, are, you are carrying the anointing. And that is why you are, you must ensure that you give yourself 
to fasting and praying. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and pray. You can pray in tongues for 30 minutes. To start with, you can do 30 minutes. Okay, for some of you that know, you know, to start with, you can do 15 minutes. And let me tell you, let me give you a tip. When you do 15 minutes, you are doing 15 minutes in tongues. Okay? Or you are praying 15 minutes. Hmm. I trust the anointing of the Spirit. You do first day, second day, 15 minutes. Third by third, fourth day. When you are doing the 15 minutes, eh, you will do one hour. And you look at your time. Say, ah, so it's one hour I've done. And it looks like 15 minutes. I'm serious. Oh, man, Shelek. Has it happened to you before? Yeah? yeah. Can I get a witness? So, thank God. Thank God I can get a witness. I can get a witness. So it means, it means it's happening to people not because they are pastors. You know, we have, we have a wrong way of thinking, especially in some part of, the, you know, part of the world that we came from, that I came from. I know many of us, you are from different, you know, you know, from, from different countries, whatever. But for example, when somebody is praying in tongues, see, I was not a pastor, but because I go to pray and I talk to people about Jesus, everybody start calling me pastor. When you pray and you talk Bible, so the Bible says in John 3, 16, it's a pastor, pastor. See, that's the, you don't need to be a pastor to release power. Share and bomb me. Are you listening to me? You don't need to be a It's not a particular. It, pastoring and evangelism or duality is a responsibility. So are you getting what I'm trying to say? And of course, there's the grace that are released to back such responsibility. But bottom line is this. You give yourself to fasting and praying. Give yourself to what? Fasting and praying. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Say, give yourself to praying. It's very important. Hallelujah. So now we're going to, you know, before we leave, before I leave the stage. Amen. So now we're just going to pray in the Holy Ghost if you can. But if you cannot pray in the Holy Ghost, you just say, Father, I receive the measure, you know, full measure of your spirit. But if you cannot, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. For those who don't pray in the tongues, you can see me again after service. We're going to pray with you. Or the prayer department, they're going to pray with you. The ministers are going to pray with you. But you're praying the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost.